Welcome to Glad Chat episode four on Service Portal. I am Sarah Tolson, a senior technical consultant with Gladfast Consulting, and this is my co-host, co-conspirator. <laughs> introduce yourself, Megan. Hi, I'm Megan Ahrens. I am a technical consultant at Glidefast. I have been working with service now for about five years now, probably a little more, actually. I've touched a bunch of the platform, including Service Portal. I'm excited to talk about it today. All right, well, let's jump in. So, Megan, what do you like about Service Portal? Like, what draws you to it? Honestly, I I like the freedom of it. You know, like you're kind of you're kind of stuck to in the back end of Service now. You're stuck to kind of a certain way of doing things, right? Yeah, the to, form the list and the da 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 da. Right, and and sometimes it's just not everything everyone needs right like they need a little bit more and you can you have the flexibility to build that in the service portal and and to build a really good user experience and i think that it's fun you know <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah same here like with the uh with the platform you have like the list and the form and what have you i think i was talking on mute because i'm really talented like that um <laughs> but i was agreeing with you and i i agree the the freedom to create this totally unique experience that really just speaks to the culture and the branding of a certain company or organization. It's a lot of fun. It, it really is a lot of fun to just cater to the people that are doing the good work at whatever company that we happen to be working with and just helping make their lives easier. I, I, I love knowing that I, I'm making somebody's life easier when I get to put that portal together, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So um, what's been your favorite project so far? <sighs> Let's see. <laughs> that's a hard question. That's that's a tough call. Because like my very first project, it was one of Glyphas' very first HR portals. So it was terrifying. But <laughs> the people that work there were just so nice. And they were so easy to work with. And I, I just I just love them. They were really good clients to work with. And they were really happy with the, the portal we built them and everything. So that was a lot of fun. But uh, I would have to say the project that has been my favorite this far was working with the Department of Tennessee. The design that actually you and I and Lauren Toomey, another one of our portal developers, put together. I just loved the transformation. The The feedback was amazing. When we first started some of our first initial mock-ups, what, what, what did he say? That it looked prison-ish, something yeah, like that. But yep. then when we were done, took <laughs> all their feedback they were like, you knocked it out of the park. And we really did. Yeah. Like that was such a great design to put together. And it, you felt really good about it because, you know, this is going to help some of the most vulnerable people in the state of Tennessee. And coming from a local government background, that that just made me so happy to, to put that together. So I definitely say that that one's one of my favorites. Yeah. State of Tennessee would probably be one of my favorites as well. Mm -hmm. I like it because it was a very different approach to what I would say any other service portal that we've done. Oh, yeah was because you know it was a csp portal you you really had to make it more like human friendly mm -hmm. you know yeah which was a little different than you know you're doing your normal itsm it portals which was cool yeah. it was interesting completely yeah. different audience there the the general public versus like an internal audience that already knows your workflows and your processes with right. the company and all that it, it was it's really interesting the difference that you get between like a csm project and an itsm project and yep. then hr is it's is a whole in the like the esc <laughs> portal they're they're like a whole nother beast that you have to develop yeah. for you're finding out right now uh, my very I've, first yeah. HR project is mm -hmm. new service portal project and mm -hmm. it's a little bit of a beast <laughs> yeah i've seen what they want to do though you're going to have a lot of fun on that project it's it's going to be really awesome to see what you come up with there yeah yeah i'll be bugging you for uh, help <laughs> <laughs> so that's cool sarah where do you think that service portal will be going well we this this uh, platform, you know, funnily enough, I was looking through the going through the historic blog articles on codecreative.io the other night and going back how far to before Service Portal and seeing how far we've come 
through the years and everything. And with a new UX framework, I know that Service Portal is trying to encourage people, or ServiceNow rather, is trying to encourage people to go to that, to the new framework and everything, which isn't isn't quite ready to replace Service Portal. Right. Uh, there is There are some updates coming for the ESC in the next release that we've seen, mm-hmm. which will be really exciting, very intuitive, very clean. But they are starting to look at sunsetting service portal as the focus for their for their UI. However, I, I really can't tell you at this point whether or not I'm sure they'll get there. But right now, the now experience framework just isn't there to really replace the self-service right. side of things, which is fine because I don't know about you, but I, I need a little more time to get used <laughs> to that new framework and get it, get my head around it and everything because it's so different from service portal. I mean, it's gorgeous and I see the intent and see where they were going and everything, but I think service portal is going to be around for a little while longer, you know? And that'll give us more time to uh, tool around and make those really custom, really gorgeous user experiences that we love to put together. Right. Yeah. So speaking of gorgeous service portals, I, I get a lot of questions about the value of design, you know, because uh, a lot of projects are like, oh, we just want out of box. We just want out of box. And then they see the screenshots of the work that Glidefast portal team has done. And they're like, oh, but how much does that cost? You know, and uh, <laughs> so what value have you seen? What impact have you seen design have in your different projects? Well, if you take a look at the out of box service portal there, you know, it's usable. It's definitely usable, but in my opinion, not very intuitive. And I think that when you go into things and, and you design things for a user, you can go and theme it all you want, but even just like moving a couple of widgets around mm-hmm. from different pages to the home page makes it so much more intuitive. Mm-hmm. It makes it easier to use. And I, I think that clients are at the end of the day way happier with something, you know, beautiful, but also super usable too. Oh yeah. Um and it makes me laugh sometimes when people are like, Oh, don't focus on the front end as much. I'm like, uh, I think that uh I think that they're almost even. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, and and this, this is something I often say, like a site can be gorgeous, but if it doesn't work, it doesn't matter how pretty it is. It's just art, you know, let's appreciate it. Great. But it's not helping me get my job done. Um, There, there is this balance, like you said, between the functional and design. The other side of that is that studies have shown if the site doesn't look good, users are less likely to trust it, which means they're less likely to adopt. And a lot of the ROI that people see in their ServiceNow implementations comes from that that self-service component where people are going through the portal and not tying up their IT department or their HR department with in-person requests or phone requests or what have you. So, so a lot of that goes into that whole decision to adopt and use the portal, I think. Yeah, I definitely agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. All right. So... If you could do, if you could work, do a portal for anybody in the whole wide world, anybody? who would it be? Oh yes. my gosh. It's going to take me a while to think about it. You go first. <laughs> I would probably say two things. I would die. I'm originally from the Raleigh area, North Carolina. And with my background in local government, I would die to do a service portal and especially a front facing citizen service portal for the city of Raleigh. I think that would be so freaking awesome. That would be a lot of fun or really any of the cities and towns that I've grown up with here in uh, central North Carolina. I think that would be a lot of fun. That would be a good start for me. Do you think of anybody? No, I I don't know if I have one, honestly. <laughs> I just, I want to build out something super cool, super helpful, mm-hmm. but I don't have anybody in mind that, that can let me take it on, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like if we were to do work for Disney or, okay, <laughs> since I'm a major nerd, I, I think of like Wizards of the Coast. I want to make a D&D themed service portal for the employees there. Yes. Because you know, everybody that works there has to be a certain level of nerd. Like it's got to be in the application process somewhere. So yeah. I think that would be a really fun one to uh, put together as well. Like a really cute Star Wars theme. That would be Absolutely. <laughs> that would be Absolutely. great. Absolutely. Good yeah. Lord. With everything that Disney owns now, you could go a lot of different directions with that, yeah. whether it's like classic Disney or Star Wars or Avengers or whatever. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I didn't even mm-hmm. think of that. I wasn't even thinking commercial, I guess. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
And yeah. The commercial is harder for me to think of because you know there's so many brands that that like are so much a part of our our household their oh, yeah. household names that you don't even think oh that's a company that might need automation and workflows and self service right. portal and stuff like that so uh, it, it is kind of hard to think of it like that but we've had a lot of good clients come in a lot of big names that have been a lot of fun to work with and things yeah. like that so it's kind of like whatever they bring in I'm I'm fine to do it it's a lot of fun to work with a, a lot of these larger companies so. Well, let's see. Do you have any service portal horror stories to share? Service portal horror stories. Well, I'm sure that um, redacting names to protect the guilty, of course. <laughs> well, I'll be the guilty because <laughs> when service portal came out, <laughs> yeah, back back in my day, I'm just kidding. In the day, <laughs> um, I was like put on a proof of concept. And it was painfully new, very, very new. Um, was this like Helsinki new or? Yeah, like Helsinki new. Oh, um, it was rough. Um, <laughs> and because I, I had some angular experience and by experience, I, I mean, like I had like a week long, like, <laughs> Camp. They were like, you're perfect for this. And oh, like, you can totally do angular. That's all you need. <laughs> I was like, okay, cool. Let's do this. So long story short, a lot, I could not figure out how to get um, like widgets when you clicked a button to take me to another page. And so I built like a bunch of wireframes or <laughs> not wire, not wireframes. I'm sorry. Iframes. I, I built a bunch of iframes and put them in modals because I knew how to call a modal. Wow. <laughs> it was so bad. It was so mm -hmm. funny. And, and it's hilarious to me now because I couldn't, couldn't even figure out how to print some things on the page sometimes. Like, mm -hmm. I was like, it's not working. Where I was then and where I am now is like so much better. Like, it's so crazy. Mm -hmm. and, and documentation has gotten much better. So oh, yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> what about you? We, we've had, no. we've had, well, I, I came in later. I've been on the platform since H A J K L. <laughs> uh, London, maybe? Wow. Yeah. Like I, I, I did a lot of uh, freelance design, freelance websites and stuff like that before the platform. So I brought that knowledge in uh, with me onto the platform. So by the time I got here, there was a lot of uh, the documentation and best practices and the old guard, as you will, had already like dissected it and torn it apart yeah. and put it back together and say, this is how you do it. And of course I was trained by somebody who has been on ServiceNow since cheater forever <laughs> yeah it, it's, it's been great having him as a resource and everything so he's been able to teach me a lot of the uh, best practices right. and things like that to get me started but even being off the platform I still watched his work and you know looked over his shoulder and was like uh -uh, you need to like add some more padding or something because yeah. that does not look good but uh it, watching the platform evolve like service portal initially came out I think in Geneva but it like crash it was not ready for go live or anything so they like had to almost entirely reboot it and rewrite it in helsinki from what i understand and uh, so you you were doing that like right at the beginning of Very like beginning. yeah yeah and and the capabilities that we have access to and stuff like that have only grown since then so uh yeah i, I kind of got lucky coming in when i did because like all the all the pain all the like um what do you call them when you're like getting used to things and growing pains, growing pains, all the growing yeah. pains that happened now. So they were like good oh, yeah. and everything. And then uh, when I, I'm sitting at a desk at city hall and I see what my husband does for a living, I'm like, Oh my gosh, like this would revolutionize government. And so that got me real interested in it. And, and it has the, the CSM, the CSM application has been revolutionary for our government clients yeah. and all that. So that's been a lot of fun. So what are you working on right now? keeping the client names out of it, of course. What different things are you doing? Well, right now, me and you both are building out a asset search and claim widget in the service portal. Yeah, that's been fun. <laughs> it's been a little challenging, definitely. Um, I think that, first of all, it's one, one main widget, right? And me and you are both trying to <laughs> work on it together. Yes. I think we are even typing comments back and forth to each other when we go into it. Yeah, that's been fun. It, it cracks me up. <laughs> like, I think my most recent comment in there was like, 
please make me pretty, Sarah, please. <laughs> if you found that one yet. I don't so know if I found that one. I'll have to go look for it. It's in HTML. So we are building a search and claim. So there are a bunch of assets out that I guess don't have an owner, right? Yeah, and they have to they have to claim them and, and say, okay, we know what this is that's on our system. It's not some hacker trying to like get up all in all in our business. Right. So it's good. But we're building in like it's like a it's a list widget. It's the same right. as like a simple list widget, but we're adding in like the ability to filter the list and to mm -hmm export the list and a lot of the things you see with like the typical data table widget we had to add in a lot of extra extra actions and we wanted to put it in a user interface that worked better for the people that were working right. with it because the data table is good for showing a huge amount of data but not necessarily working that data in this case so right so i mean i think they needed to show like seven or eight fields on mm -hmm. it and then also be able to claim it on the same row. It just was very hard to read. Oh, yeah. um, so it was one of those instances where it was better to create custom in our opinion than to go and customize the out of box data table mm -hmm. widget. And I tell you what, the client did make it easy because they're like, here's like a whole website with our branding mm -hmm. stuff in it. And we're like, oh, so I don't even <laughs> think about what this looks like. I just have to like do to do to do, do. So, uh, and yeah. like, Pro tip for anybody out there that's looking at using us here at GlideFast to build out a service portal. If you can give us your brand assets, a uh, style guide, the photography that you want to see or whatever images and icon sets and stuff like that, that makes it so much easier just to get yeah. going, to know what direction we're going to take your implementation and things like that. It does make it a lot easier. And I guess that can lead into another question. If you could advise future clients as to what you need to help make their service portal implementation a success and make it a smooth process. What would you ask them to do? What would you say would help them help them help you? Well, definitely like the, like you said, style, I want their style sheets if possible. We definitely want to go over processes and the type of users that will be using mm -hmm the portal, right? So that we can tailor it to them. What do, and you know, like um, someone was asking me recently, how do we design for the user, right? And like you yeah. can send out surveys and stuff beforehand and like, what would you mm -hmm. like to see in this portal? And not that we're gonna do it, everything, right? <laughs> but, but it gives us a better idea of what they need so that we can build, build it to the best of our abilities and, and make it usable and pretty too. Oh yeah, I definitely, I definitely have to agree and encourage taking the extra time, maybe a few ever extra hours in workshop or filling out extra questionnaires. So we kind of have a better sense of who your users are and what they want. It does go a long way to make sure that we cover all our bases and we're not getting to go live and you got the, and the clients like, Oh no, you forgot this thing and we must have it. And right. You know, then change orders and you know, it's, it, it can be a mess. It's, it's better to give us as much information and everything up front so we can, it, it actually contracts the amount of time we spend overall. If we don't have to go back and rework or have to go back and restyle, or we have your branding team, your marketing team on board from the start so that the service portal is aligning with whatever other sites or whatever they want it to align with. So yeah. And if you don't like it, give us constructive feedback. That's always right. good. Right. <laughs> yeah. Though I, I don't think I will ever top that looks prison-ish. <laughs> that was hilarious. You know, we were going for simple. Mm -hmm. They didn't want simple. They wanted friendly. They wanted friendly and they wanted colors. And I, I never get to do colors because a lot of the service portals yeah. we build, it's like very... Yeah. I was like, oh, I could do some colors now. Let me pull out my Pantone books and we'll go to town, buddy. So uh, yeah. when I find some accent colors in their original site, I'm like mm -hmm. using that. <laughs> yep. 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 I, but I have like, it, it's amazing what you can do with one color. Cause if I've, I've had some clients oh, give yeah. me one color and make a website. And in fact, the glide fast, the demo site I've built up for uh, FastGov is one color. Um, no yeah. Yeah. It's, but it's like five different shades of blue. That's an interesting thing. I, 
that's not something that I would even think of is like, oh, they're giving you one color, but you can shade it however you want. Exactly, exactly. And you can use the background colors. There's a lot you can do with one color to create accents and to create a sense of space and also to uh, create like different content areas. So you can limit the content or you can like help the user zero in on different types of content at one time and it not be like overwhelming to them and everything. Right. Right. And that, that portal is beautiful. So, mm -hmm. Oh, I I'm, I'm very proud of it. It was a lot of fun. And and I'm more, I, I did some of the, uh, the artwork on my own time because I just, it's so it, cool. It was so fun. I loved it. And of course I having worked in city hall would be the one that would nerd out over like drawing a picture of a garbage truck because Ooh. The garbage truck is beautiful. Like you sent it to me and I was like, I didn't know that I would ever love a, gar a garbage truck. Yep. Oh, but it is actually a recycled truck because it, it was kind of a homage because <laughs> some of my favorite people when I worked at City Hall were the guys that drove the recycle truck. Like they come into my office every day before they went out on the route to collect like our, or once a week to collect our recycling. And it was always, hey, how you doing? And they're the ones I kept the candy jar on my desk for and everything. It's just real sweet guys that I just awesome. love to death. But yeah. Yep. So, Will, we are about at our time. Any closing thoughts regarding your work in service portal because i know you don't totally focus you do you know yeah. as service portal developers we do like all the things okay. just just not everybody is comfortable with the front end parts so we those of us that are do that but any parting words regarding service portal and your experience as a service portal developer on the platform uh, you know the people that are afraid of it don't be i mean it's really just a lot like the back end scripting as well don't be scared i see i'm scared of the back end scripting i'm like oh, it's very oh. it's very like um yeah don't be afraid of it and you know if you need help with making things pretty uh, reach out to sarah oh sarah <laughs> we've got a number of people right. on staff that are very talented when it comes to the front end design and everything and whatever you may need if you have questions about it you're a developer feel free to reach out to us or if you're a client and you want to see your employees supported with a world-class experience, please give us a call. We would love to work with you. And that being said, I am Sarah Tolson, and this is Megan Aarons with Glidefast Consulting. Have a good day. Bye, guys.